Hi everyone, my name is Dmitro Sirond. In this video, I will tell you how we are using Vector as resilient logs and metrics collecting and processing solution for our clients. My colleague made the first video about Vector one year ago, and we got good feedback about it. I promised our auditor that I would create an updated version where I provide more details about our implementation. So, let's begin. Today, I will start by explaining what Vector is and provide information about the terminology used to make it easier for you to understand. Then we will discuss the deployment topologies available and when you should use each. Knowing enough about Vector's basics, we will move on to our use case and how Vector helped us create resilient and cheap solution for our clients. Finally, I will introduce you to our Terraform model, which is available under the open source license and can be used to deploy Vector into your infrastructure. If you check our website, you will find that Datadog describes it as a high-performance observability data pipeline that puts organization in control of their observability data. You can collect, transform, and route all your logs, metrics, and traces to any vendors you want today and any other vendors you may want tomorrow. Vector enables dramatic cost reduction, novel data enrichment, and data security where you need it, not where it must convenient for your vendors. Open source and up to 10 times faster than every alternative. Yeah, sounds like a good marketing slogan. But what matters to me as a technician? Let's see. First of all, it's written in Rust, which means it's a pretty modern language. Hopefully, it has a good architecture suitable for use in the cloud and Kubernetes environments, while keeping back compatibility for on-premises and hybrid setups. It's developed by the Datadog, who is a leader in the monitoring domain. Vector is available under the open source license, has a big community, and 1500 stars on GitHub. It's available on multiple platforms as pre-built binaries. It has an official Helm chat for Kubernetes clusters. Also, it has own DSL language, so-called VRL, Vector Remap language. You will use to define your data pipelines and integration with many sources and destinations for your logs. Another cool feature, a unit test framework. It can help if you have a complex log collector topologies and need to test them before rolling out changes, which is a huge advantage. That is all I can recall now but you can find more information on the official website. Before we dig deeper, let me tell you about Vector's terminology. Events represent the individual units of data in Vector. It can be logs, metrics, or traces. We can deploy Vector in two roles, using the same binary, as an agent or aggregator. Usually, we deploy agent to the edge to perform data collection. The aggregator role is designed to collect and process data from multiple upstream sources. These upstream sources could be other vector agents or non-vector sources. A source defines where a vector should pull data from or how it should receive data pushed to it. A topology can have any number of sources, and as it ingests data, it normalizes into events via transforms. Examples of source include file, syslog, stdin, or s3 bucket. A transform is responsible for mutating events as vector transports them. This might involve parsing, filtering, sampling, or aggregating. You can have any number of transforms in your pipeline. How they are composed is up to you. A sync is a destination for events. Each sync 
design and transmission method is dictated by the downstream service it interacts with. The socket sync, for example, streams individual events, while the AWS S3 sync buffers and flushes data. You can find that many services can be used as sources and syncs, giving you flexibility in building your data pipelines. Now, let's discuss what possible setup topologies Vector offers in the documentation. One of the options is to deploy your Vector as distributed agent. If we are talking about Kubernetes, you can achieve it by running it as a daemon set or sidecar next to each application. In that case, the agent will collect logs and metrics on the edge and send them to different places, as shown in the picture below, to S3 and Elasticsearch. Another possible topology is when agents collect logs and metrics and send them to the vector as a central service in the aggregator node. There it aggregates buffers and routes data according to the rules. The last topology I want to show is when your agents collect logs and metrics and send them to the stream. It could be Kafka or Kinesis. Then you have aggregator, which consumes the stream, does transformation and sends it to the different destinations. Our company specializes in helping clients adopt Kubernetes in AWS, and today's case based on our client's need. Most of the time, when we are working with Kubernetes in AWS, we are using EKS as a managed Kubernetes service. If your workload is small and simple, you are using CloudWatch to collect logs, as it is easy and works out of the box. If you want to save a bit, you can consider Rafana Loki as a cheaper alternative for logs, but in that case your logs are not indexed. If you have a hybrid environment or specific requirements from the security team, it's more likely you need to send logs to some SIAM system based on the Elasticsearch or its open source fork, OpenSearch, which is developing and maintained by Amazon. You can manage your own OpenSearch cluster on EC2, deploy it as a stateful set to Kubernetes or use Amazon OpenSearch Managed Service. Whatever you choose, it could be a situation when your cluster is in the red status, meaning it can't ingest new data anymore. If you are using spot instances for your EKS worker nodes, you can head into a situation where your logs will be lost when your worker node is replaced. In the real-life example, you have DDoS, the number of logs increased dramatically, you have no more space on your open search data nodes, and the cluster went to the red status. Depending on your open search cluster size, it takes time to scale data nodes volumes and can take hours. I don't think you interested to lost all the logs during the DDoS and be unable to analyze later what happened with your application and have to improve its behavior in the future. We started searching for a solution to decouple data and have some resilient intermediate storage for our logs before we send them to open search. When you are looking for such solutions, the first advice you can see is to use Kafka. I have nothing against this solution, except the cost and expertise you need to have in the team to maintain Kafka properly. After some research, we found that Vector can use AWS S3 as a destination for logs, sync in Vector's terminology, and as source for aggregator, 
Knowing that AWS S3 is the cheapest data storage in AWS, has more nines than any other available service, and can scale almost indefinitely, we decided to try it. In the diagram, you can see that we have a Kubernetes cluster with two working nodes. We have vector agents installed as daemon set on these nodes. Each agent parses Kubernetes logs and reaches them if we need it and sends them to the S3 bucket for storage. In our case, we are adding cluster names to know where they were generated. The S3 bucket has configured notifications on the create object event, so we have this information in the SQS queue. The agent uses the IAM role to put objects into the S3, so there is no need to configure access key and secret. Another component in our pipeline is the aggregator. We check the SQS queue for new messages, downloads corresponding logs from the S3, and processes them according to the rules we defined in the configuration file using VRL. It uses IAM role as well to access S3 and SQS. Once logs are parsed and transformed, they are ready to send to the OpenSearch. Currently, it uses basic authentication, but it will be updated soon to support IAM authentication with OpenSearch as well. The good thing about this setup is that each step in the pipeline should receive acknowledgement before data is deleted. If, for some reason, your open search is unable to ingest logs right now, you will have a message in SQS and files on S3 during the retention period you configured. Once problems are resolved, your logs will be processed and pushed to the open search. You can tune the processing speed by scaling your aggregator pods horizontally. Because we are maintaining this kind of setup for multiple clients, we have everything described in the Terraform model. I truly believe it can be useful for others, so made it public under the open source license recently. I hope you will find it helpful in building a playground for your vector project or use in your production environment, if it fits your requirements. I will add the link to the project on GitHub in the video description, or you can use QR code you can see on the screen. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me by email or drop me a message on LinkedIn. I look forward to hearing from you how do you like this video in the comments on YouTube. Please subscribe to get notifications about new videos. If you have any ideas or suggestions to the Terraform model introduced in the video, please create issue on GitHub and I will head back to you. That's it. Stay tuned for more videos.